Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, session three, day three of our uh, budget deliberations. Um, we will, uh, based on the uh, season presenters we have, we should be able to, to pretty much stay right on schedule. The plan is to go right into the work session six. We'll rechange and and President Scan will take it over, over for that. After the work session, we'll take a quick break and then we'll reconvene after the work session with Lori and Jared to finish up the night from the budget perspective. So we kind of have bookends of budget around the work session and based on Lee, Lori and Jared as our presenters, I think we'll, we'll be pretty smooth tonight from that standpoint. So uh, if we could stand for the pledge, take a quick roll call. Pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States. States of America to and the to the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, liberty with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Lee or Grace, could you take a roll call for us? Yes. Uh, Councilman Scarinji. Present. Councilwoman Rosnetti. Present. Councilwoman Riley. Present. Councilwoman Friedman. Present. Councilman Burns. Uh, Councilman Burns might be absent. I'm sure he'll be tuning in soon. Uh, Councilman Strawn. Present. And President Scan. Present. Okay, that's six here, one absent Burns. Okay, great. Um, so we'll get right into it. Uh, we have Ken on the line. I think I heard him a second ago, right? Um, <clears throat> so you got to open up the pages first. Yeah, I just want to make sure he was here. Is Ken, is Ken with us? Um, I'm not sure. Grace is on the phone with him. She might have to send him another invite. So I can do some of this. Okay. 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 Thank you, everyone. I'd like to open officially pages 26 and 27, pages 192 to one. I'm sorry, 190, 190 to 194. So that's 26 and 27, and 190 to 194 for consideration. If we uh, start on page 194 before Ken gets on. Okay, that's fine. This is uh, my section. Go, go ahead, Chuck. Uh, this is the workers' comp se se section where we have two different types of worker comp programs right now. We have what I'm going to call the tail claims, which is prior to 2012. Uh, I believe it was 2012. We used to be self insured, and we still have claims out there that are. Uh, running themselves out and then we also have our current workers comp which is a full premium based uh, policy so if you look on page 194 the workers comp claim numbers I'm estimating the same number as last year 440,000 uh, looks like we're going to run fairly close to that um, Third party administration, we pay a third party to pay these claims, $16,000 a year. That's going to remain the same. Managed care is, uh, we have a PPO program set up with uh, UHS where a person gets injured at the job. Uh, we send them there immediately, and that's a charge of $41,600, which UHS is going to maintain the same price there. And our workers' comp premium going up from as an estimate from 1,323,100 to $1,338,520. We the, the current carrier uh gave us a two-year premium uh last year that expires this coming July. So I'm estimating it's going to go up a little bit, but I really don't have any factual numbers to base that off of. And then we have a few employees that we run through uh the payroll purposes uh, of 48,000. So that takes care of the workers' comp section of the insurance fund. Did Ken join us yet? 
no, Ken's not on. It looks like he's he said he's having some computer trouble. He's trying to restart his computer. Like I, this is complimentary. Um, I see Ken, but I can't hear him. I am here. Okay. I apologize. Now, I'm getting a I'm getting a message. Slow network connection. The network connection may be too slow to support webcams. To improve connection speed, turn off webcam. So I'm going to ignore it for the moment. Chuck, do you want to finish what page you were on, and then I'll I'll jump I in. Ken, I did page 194. That was it. That's the only thing I have. So if you want to do your pages in the insurance fund. Okay. I think you're Burns is present. Okay, Councilman Burns is locked in. So Ken, I think you started on 192. Okay, you want to start with the uh, risk management, the insurance fund? Yeah. Okay. Give me one second. Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. Thank you for your patience. All right, so we're going to start on pages 192 and 193. That's the risk management portion of the budget. It's part of the insurance fund. Uh, basically, these are the administrative costs to defend the city. Right? I think all of you are aware the city is self-insured. So if one of our EPW drivers has an accident and hits another vehicle, we defend them. Right? If there is a claim to be paid, we pay it. All right? That's what the risk management budget is about. Uh, I want you to note something, and I'll, I'll go back to this, but when you look at personal services, right, you notice that they're broken down. For example, the first assistant corporation council, it says 0.5 and then gives a salary. That means that their salaries are divided between the insurance fund and the general fund, which will show up in the law budget. Right? And they do that because the insurance fund then gets allocated and charged to all of the other funds throughout the city. Right? And so they want to use some of the personnel because a lot of the attorney time in our office is spent defending the city. Uh, there are a few important lines in here, right? Let me go down to uh, 54430, about three quarters of the way down under legal services. You notice this year we've already spent $86,000 out of a $90,000 budget. Uh, I will tell you that this is going to, we're going to spend Two hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars out of this line by the time the year is over. All right, we have a lot of litigation going on right now. Uh, we have hearings where the people in my office are actually the witnesses, and so we have to hire outside counsel in those circumstances. Last year we only spent fifty-six thousand dollars. This year we're going to end up spending probably two hundred thousand dollars or more by the end of the year. Another important line, which actually we're going to uh, write at the bottom of the page, the emergency safety repair. So far, we've only spent 1500 out of 20000 But you look at 2019, we spent $52,000 out of that line. What that line is for is so that if there's city property that is going to be potentially dangerous, right, that could cause liability to the city, right, we try to repair it, and this is, that's what this line is for. So even though we've been very good this year and have only used 1500 I would suggest you keep it at uh, 20000 On the next page, there's only one line there. It's called Provision for Incurred Loss. Right? And that line, that, that's where we actually have the funds to pay the claims. So again, if a DPW truck hits a car, uh, it costs $10,000 to fix that car. It comes out of this line. This line years ago used to be $200,000. Right over time, we've dropped it down to 150. In 2019, we spent 102. This year, we've only spent we've spent less than $18,000. Right through you know the end of September, 
Total claims against the city, $18,000. That's actually, I don't think we've ever done that well, but the additional money, that's where we're gonna draw the money for all the outside council fees. Because this is really one risk management budget. And when we're not paying a lot of claims, we're usually paying a lot of fees for attorneys in order to make up the difference. And then on, Chuck, those are the two pages I really do. Does anybody have any questions on the risk management pages? Yes, this is Councilwoman Friedman. I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, there were, let me see. Okay, my first question was um, in line 543. 300. There seems to be a significant increase there from what was budgeted in years past. Could you talk a little bit more about that, please? Uh, Aviva, I can talk about that, but I would prefer not to do it uh, unless we were in executive session. Hmm, okay. Oh, for the for the various insurance costs? Yeah. Ken, if you put your head to it, you'll think you'll remember what we've added this year that is yes. in there. I don't think that's something that we want to announce publicly. Yeah, Chuck, you can, uh, if you want to send an email to everybody on council, if you have that ability, to let them yep. know what it is. But we, we've added coverage. Are there any okay. other questions on these two pages? Um, yes. I also noticed that the vehicle repair line hasn't been funded until this year. And um, could you talk more about that, please? Why we're budgeting $50,000 there when we haven't in the past? Chuck? Yes, I, uh, let me uh, explain that one to you, Viva. Is in the past we would budget the money here, but we never have an expense line to pay it out of. So every year we're arguing with all the different departments that were in an accident, or if their car was damaged, they needed a new car. How are they going to pay for it? This way we're putting the fifty thousand dollars in there. That is, a vehicle gets damaged by an outside person, Ken's group is going to collect the money, and we'll still be able to get a vehicle before we have to wait for the money to come in which sometimes may take six, nine, 12 months to come in. So Chuck, there's a corresponding revenue line for insurance, correct? Yes. If you look on page 191, there's a M42680. Yep, which is a negative 50. Right. So they just balance out and give us a specific line to pay those repairs from. I gotcha. Where where was that previously budgeted, that fifty thousand dollars? It really wasn't. We were just okay. able to find the money in someone's department that got damaged. What would happen is say okay. they would have, you know, some vehicle uh maintenance and repair lines, but they don't plan on one of their vehicles getting hit by a member of the public and it being totaled and it costing you know thirty thousand dollars to replace and it's going to take us six months to get the money from the insurance company okay that makes sense thank you for the clarification okay. the, the, interfund, the interfund revenues that is that how you allocate chuck for the for the for the risk management if we go to page 191 uh basically you can see the interest earnings the insurance recoveries and then the inner fund revenues is where we get the money from to cover uh everything in the m fund the okay the workers comp is based off a of number of employees and dollar values associated in each type of fund uh so each one isn't broken out in the same percentage. It's broken out either by the revenue and expense breakout or by the employee uh, compensation.
Right, and Chuck, you said you did workers' comp? Yes, I did. Okay. So that's that's the insurance fund. That's pages 190 through 194. I don't know if there are any other questions on that. I just have a follow-up question. This is Councilwoman Friedman one more time. I, I'm wondering about um, that line that you said you'd prefer to talk about in executive session. Can we, will council be able to find out more about what's going on there? Can we call an executive Aviv, session? Aviv, I just sent everyone an email. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, Burns here. <clears throat> Um, my audio was a little bad there, but did you explain, I'm, I'm wondering the workman's comp claims and workman's comp insurance, what's the difference between the two? Workers' comp claims, uh, Councilman Burns, is claims that our tail claims, we used to be self-insured back in 2012, I think was the last year. So we're still paying claims outstanding on there. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are claims that predate our, our workers' comp insurance. Okay. Thanks. And if you go to page 190, uh, the little summary for everyone to look at, the thing that we have not talked about there is I'm appropriating $650,000 worth of fund balance. Um, We have roughly two and a half million dollars in fund balance and uh, we're using 650,000 of that to reduce the cost from all the other uh, funds. This is Councilwoman Friedman again. Um, I'm wondering what, what are you anticipating using that $650,000 for potentially? What it's doing, Aviva, when you appropriate fund balance, it means that all the other funds do not have to pay as much money to the insurance fund. Um, could you repeat that, please? Sorry. What, what, when you're using the appropriate fund balance in the insurance fund, where their total expenses are going to be uh, $2.5 million, uh, normally we would take $2.5 million from all the other funds to fund that. This year we're only taking 1.9 and we're reducing the cost, the general fund, the par not yeah, the parking fund, the uh, refuse fund, the water and sewer funds don't have to pay to the M fund. So this is a way to be sort of more self-sufficient i guess is that a word you would use to describe that no we built if you looked at the uh thing i sent you out uh the insurance fund had a back in 2015 had a negative fund balance okay we've grown that up to 3.2 million dollars uh and there's no reason to keep three million dollars worth of fund balance in the insurance fund so we're utilizing some of that to help all the funds in a very bad budgeting year. I see. Okay. So instead of this being three million dollars, it's been reduced to six hundred fifty thousand. Is that correct? No, it's going. It's good. The fund balance is going to go from three point two million down to like two point five million. Okay. All right. I see. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if there are any, if there aren't any other questions, do you want to uh, approve pages 190 through 194 before I go on to the law budget? Sure, we can do that. Um, I take a motion to approve pages 190 to 194. Move, move pages 190 to 194. So moved. Is that Councilwoman Friedman? Was that Councilwoman Friedman on the motion? Yes, it was. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'm usually good at voices. Okay. Um, so, uh, Ken and Lori, we got uh, Councilwoman Freeman on the motion, Councilwoman Resiniti on the second. All in favor of moving 190 through 194? Aye. Aye. 
Aye. Anyone anyone opposed? No. Okay. All right, Ken, go ahead to 27, 27, please. I have a question. Go ahead. If, first of all, I was wondering when the uh, uh, public, we're going to have a uh, public hearing on the, on, on the budget. Is that correct? Yes. Councilman Burns, this is Councilman Scalin. I'll address it at the uh, work session, okay? Okay. All right. And then I'm just wondering, once we approve uh, 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 some of the pages, and let's say we have the public hearing and somebody said something in the public hearing that strikes me. Is it possible to bring back a page before we vote on that? How does that work? Or should we address that in the public, in, in the uh, work session? Once, once the pages are approved in during the budget hearings, you need a super majority vote, five to two, to bring pages back. Okay, thanks. All right. And, and well, in this case, everybody voted for so far, so anybody could make that motion. Okay. If, if somebody okay, were in so the minority, be somebody that, if on okay. these All pages right, the vote had been four to three, only the people who voted with the four could make the motion to bring them back. Okay. And then if you make the motion to bring it back, you still need a five, five vote yes. to, to bring it back. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Ken, go ahead with 26 and 27. Okay. Actually, this year we've got a lot going on in the law department budget. The law department budget is part of the general fund. Uh, and there are a few different things in personal services that I want to go over with everybody. Right. Again, you'll notice that a lot of these are percentages, right, because they're divided between the general fund in the, in the law budget and the insurance fund. Uh, a particular note here is we talked about this in, in August. Uh, we're going to start the year with three assistant corporation councils, but you'll see that the first, excuse me, the assistant corporation council that says 0 0.02 at 55, 589, right? That essentially means that that position is only funded for one pay period, two weeks, right? The expectation is at the end of two weeks, uh, the attorney filling that position is going to move to personnel so that we can keep a full staff and personnel, and we're hoping to hire people in court counsel so that we'll have a full staff in court counsel in 2021 as well, right? So that's why that one says 0 0.02. We're really not going to have three assistant attorneys. Uh, that's only going to be for the first week or two. The second thing that I think needs to be noted in there uh, is the legal typist is unfunded, right? That's something that we agreed to do. Uh, you know, not only for the rest of this year, uh, but for, you know, some part of next year uh, to help keep the cost down. I will tell you that if at some point during the year uh, we do end up having funds, if we get money from the federal government or the state, right, I may come back and ask you to fund this position, particularly towards the end of the year, because we are going to have a transition. The legal typist does all the what I'll call, you know, all the paperwork, all, all of the keep, keeping, all the record keeping. And we're going to have a transition from 2021 to 2022. Uh, the secretary to court counsel can't do all of this on their own, right? That's why there have always been two positions. Uh, this position was actually filled, but then when COVID hit, the person who had taken the position uh, had childcare issues and had to back out. So we've left it vacant for now. We're leaving it vacant for next year. But I really think at some point during the year, we're going to want to fill it so that we have a smoother transition into 2022. The other part of that, Secretary to Court Council, why they can't do everything, they are you know, doing a lot of this work. And if that position stays vacant for you know, most of the year, and if money's available, you know, I may come back and ask for a small responsibility adjustment because that person really is doing two people's jobs. Uh, has been most of this year and will be doing for, you know, what I assume is most of next year. The last thing under personal services, uh, the assistant corporation council, where it says vacant at $45,000, that's incorrect. The pay for that position is $46,125. I confirm that with payroll. So I'm actually going to ask for a motion uh, to amend that line. Right, and I'm going to ask for a motion to transfer 
$125 from contingency, the budget line A1420-51000, assisting corp counsel from 45,000 to 46,125. I don't know if anybody is willing to make that motion. Okay, would anybody like to make that motion to move $1,125 from contingency to A1420.51000? Um, I'll make a motion to move a $1,125 from line A1420.51000. I'll second that. I didn't hear the second, I'm sorry. Second, Skaringi. Thank you. Okay, for a motion, do we need a roll call, Ken, or do we? Do we... No, you can, you can ask, and then if there are, uh, if there are no's, we can double check, make sure we know who they are, and if we need to, we can do a roll call vote. Okay. But generally, the first time, we just do a voice vote. Okay, all in favor of moving $1,125, uh, to add to the Assistant Corporation Council and make it 46125 All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry. Aye. Anyone opposed? No. Okay. So Aye. we have... Uh, Thank you very much. Yeah, that was just... I, I, think it was, I think it was just a typo. Uh, yeah, we have Councilman Resonetti on the motion and Councilman Scringy on the second on that. Thank Mr. You. Chair? Yes, 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 Councilman Scringy, go ahead. Does that increase the total of the 2021 proposed budget in this section by $1,125? Or was that a an actual just typo that doesn't impact? No, no, the it'll, it'll actually, it's an actual increase. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So the pages, when approved, will have to be as amended. Thank you, Ken. Ken, where, where are you getting the money from? Uh, contingency. Which contingency line? The general contingency. Okay. On page, what's contingency on? 45? Yeah, so it's A1990.55000. Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, has that page 45 been approved yet? No. no. 45, okay. that's the association due. Is there a different page? 46. 46, 46? I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, it's paid. That, that's done on the last, that's like the last page to be approved. Yeah, I'm looking at, no, I don't think that's so. That's what I thought, yeah. So that would have to be approved as amended as well, but that's not right away, obviously. I was just checking. Thank you. Could you re please repeat which contingency budget line that's coming from? The very first one that's got twenty five thousand in it, A nineteen ninety five five zero zero zero. Okay, thanks. Okay, the rest of the law budget, uh, nothing really significant. Uh, I'll point your attention to about three quarters of the way down the page, litigation arbitration expense. Again, you'll see that to date, we've only spent uh, under $3,000 with a $21,000 budget. Uh, there is actually a pending hearing and we're not only are we going to spend everything in that line, but I suspect we're going to be under budgeted uh, by a good deal of money. So I think leaving that for 2021 as 21,000, uh, it's probably sometimes it's been more, sometimes it's been less. In 2019, we did it for under 10,000. Uh, this year, it's probably going to be 40 or 50 thousand dollars. So I think 21,000 is probably somewhere in the middle. We had actually decreased that a number of years ago to I think 18 or 19 thousand, but then we were always over budget by two or three thousand. On page 27. Uh, this is something that needs to be corrected. Uh, it's, you see the travel and training and subs, dues, and memberships. Uh, the travel and training is continuing legal education. Uh, that's required of all attorneys. Every two years, you have to finish at least 24 hours, well, depending on how long you've been an attorney, 24 to 32 hours of continuing legal education. Uh, there's actually 
money that has been spent in that line, I, I just don't think that it was it was allocated properly. So we are correcting that. But we have spent a good deal of that money. Uh, and subs dues and membership, that's for New York State Bar, Broome County Bar. Uh, in particular, the New York State Bar is helpful because you get your CLE classes at a discount. So it actually ends up costing you less if you join the New York State Bar and then get your CLE classes. Uh, we've actually held the cost down a good deal on CLE this year because we've been taking a lot of free courses uh, because they've been offered regarding COVID response. And I'm trying to think in these dues memberships before, you know, in 2019, the numbers are consistent with what we have proposed for 2021, uh, the actuals. And the last thing I always like to point out to everybody, if you look on the third line down for overtime, right, there is no overtime in my office. I would be very pleased if you would all like to pay Brian and Sharon overtime. You can add an extra $200,000 to the budget, but assuming you're not going to do that, I'd just like to remind everybody we don't charge the city for overtime. Does anybody have any questions on pages 26 and 27? Yes, this is Councilwoman Friedman. I've got a question for you. I am wondering about the legal typist position. Um, why is it unfunded rather than vacant if you're hoping to fund it by the end of the year? Well, unfunded keeps it in the budget. So I, I apologize. Maybe I didn't understand the question. Unfunded is specifically so that it stays in the budget, so it can be funded in the following year without having to go back to civil service, without having to amend, you know, the budget to add a position again. What, so that keeps the line open? Yes. Right. But then if we're hoping to fund this position by the end of the year, wouldn't that mean that we would then have to find that money from somewhere else in the budget? Yeah, and, and like I said, I think that it's something that should be funded, but that's going to depend on whether or not money is available, how the year has gone. I, there are too many variables to to fund it now. Uh, I do think okay. that if we end up getting federal or state money and we have funds available, it's one of the positions that should be funded towards the end of the year to help with our transition from one administration to the next. I was going to okay. say, hopefully it's not funded from another line. It's funded from additional revenue, correct? Hopefully. Yes. Yeah, we're not going to take money out of contingency or another line to try to fund this now. I, I think we have to see how next year looks. I just wanted to say that to everybody. So if I came back next August, everybody would say, oh, that's right. He told me that we were probably going to do that. Right. He's, Thank at least he was going Thank to you. Ahead. Is it, I don't see it listed in the the contingency unfilled positions line. Is that correct? It's just unfunded for right now? This is just unfunded for now. OK. All right. Thank you for the clarification. And that makes the distinction, like if we're really looking at it, it's, it's actually a good question in the sense that um, last week when we talked about the fire, remember there was four unfunded and four contingency. So that's the distinction. They just come back to us and take it from contingency. Unfunded means we actually have to have the revenue or something else to do it. Yes. Slightly Correct. different, even, even though the lines are still in the budget. Correct. Okay. Ken, when we approve these, do we just do we just refer to it as amended, or do we have to refer to that amended specifically in some way? Uh, no, no. It, 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 and in fact, once once a motion's made and the page is amended, but you can just say make the motion to approve pages 26 and 27 as amended. Okay. Because the the line, the total line, is going to change by 1,125, and that's that's the amendment. Mr. Chairman, motion to uh, uh, move pages 190 through 194 and 26 and 27 as amended. Okay, we already have 190 through 194 done. So 20, you, so your motion to move 26 and 27 as amended? Yes, sir. Okay. Second. Bill Burns. Okay. okay. All in favor of moving 26 and 27 as amended? Aye. 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 
Anyone opposed? Uh, okay. Thank you, Scott, for the, uh, Thank you very much. What's that? Thank you, Scott, for the overtime. Yeah. So we got <laughs> Councilman Scaringi on the motion and Councilman Burns on the second for those for those lines. Okay, moving right along. We got uh, we got Lee Rogers on the line. Yes, hi. All right, Lee, I'm assuming you're going to make a motion to in increase the personal services on page 14 immediately. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, so we'll start with the uh, city council's page here, which is page 14. Wait, hold on. I like Do these pages open. have to be opened? Yeah. I'd yes. like to officially open pages 14, pages 24 through 25, 31, and page 64, please. Go ahead, Lee. Okay. So first up is city council. This is our budget uh, outside of salaries. There's really not a whole lot to play with here. Um, we do budget for business cards and a little bit for uh, travel and training. Should you guys want to attend a conference or something? Uh, I should point out on the salary line, the personal services line. Ken, I'm not sure if you want to touch on this at all, but uh, City Council is getting a raise this year of $152, and that is due to some legislation that was passed a few years back uh, that ties your salaries to the CPI. I, I have, I yes. have, and this will come up with the discussion uh, regarding the mayor later as well. I have asked City Council for a number of years to please try to set the salaries for the city council, for all elected officials, for city council members and for the mayor, uh, at least a year in advance of, of elections so that you don't do them on an annual basis. Uh, city, The last city council failed to you know, create a schedule for 2020 through 2023. And as a result, you're getting a CPI increase every year. If you would like to not get that increase in 2020, uh, you cannot do that through the budget. You actually have to go and amend the code that provides for that increase. So you can, you know, you could take it out of the budget now if you wanted to, but it's not effective until you amend the code and create salaries for, you know, you for yourselves, which I think is very awkward uh, for 2020, 2021, you know, through 2020. Three, I guess, whenever this term ends. So are there any questions for Ken or I on this page? In, this, in, the, in, the, mayor's, in the mayor's address, he asked us to not take a raise. Do we want to consider that, even if we have to go through another process to do that, or, or no? I'd like to consider that, Mr. Chairman. It's fine with me. I think it would be appropriate. I think it's appropriate for no raise. Yeah, we should not take a raise. I agree. Mr. Chairman, if I, if I can ask uh, Lee or Ken, what is the cost differential between the total of our council salaries last year versus what would be budgeted for next year with the increase in CPI? Chuck, if I write, it's just seven times 152. Yes. Just a little over $1,000, $1,000, 64. Yeah, 1064. Yeah, it's not a big number, but. Okay. Well, it's it's not much, but I'm in agreement. I think it just it just at least shows that we're. I, mean, I don't think we're overpaid by any means, but I think um, the mayor mentioned that. And I think it's at least shows that we're you know in with the department heads and not taking an increase. If, we can motion to to change that now, and then we would also have to do a secondary um, it, as part of the more the work session process. You could motion right. to change that now, but then you're going to have to pass legislation to uh, set the salaries for at least 2021 at the non-increased rate. And you got to do that through, you know, it's a regular business meeting, it's an ordinance, you're, you're amending the code. Okay. Mr. Chairman. So we, can you and so I write up a motion to change that out of the budget for we can do that now though and then amend this page as, as that and then we can do that later through the legislation? Yeah, I'm okay with that because I don't think you're going to 
get the legislation in. I mean, maybe if you want to, we can add it to the work session. We could do it for Wednesday night if you if you want to. Well, if it doesn't uh, happen no, tonight, that's yeah. fine. But, but just can so I we can move the page, I think we should do that now. If 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 we have a motion to do that, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to reduce line A one zero one zero dot five one zero 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 on page fourteen in the amount of one thousand sixty four dollars to move that to contingency. Second, the amount of what? Okay, that almost paid for the increase to, to the legal. We almost put it back. Okay. All right, do we, uh, that can also be a, a voice vote, Ken? Yes. Okay, all in favor of changing, um, reducing uh, A110.51000 by $1,064. All in favor of that? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. So, so we, we will work with. Uh, we have Geo, uh, Councilman Scarengi on the motion and, and President Scanlon on the second. Okay. And we'll work with Lee and Grace and, and Corporate Council to, to craft up the legislation that will match that at, at some point. This meeting or next meeting, I guess. Okay. This so, is Councilwoman Friedman. I was wondering if I could ask a question about a different line on this page. Sure. In the office supplies line, how, why is that a a revenue so far this year of ninety two dollars? We must have credited something. Let me see if I can find out what that was for. Um, that might actually be the business card since we had uh, a good hand. I was just council members. I was just about to say, wasn't there a reduction in the cost as well when we um, when we changed the format of the business cards, Lee? Was that last year? Yes. Remember the printing style? It was less yes, imposed. It was more flat, and I think it didn't have any color, so that was a reduction in cost. Right, and we changed vendors as well. Correct. But I think that still doesn't explain what, how we made revenue off of those. Uh, unless, am I misreading this? I have encumbered or expended through October says minus $92.43, or $92.43, I mean. So you, you're, correct, you're correct in your thought, Aviva. It doesn't necessarily mean it's revenue. It means it's a a, a debit refund of sales expenses. Does IT does Lori's line pick up our phones and stuff? Because I don't see that in here. That was just, just a curiosity. So do we have that question answered, or are, what's going on? Actually, so, we got. Here's what we got. We ended up uh, getting the return of that amount of money from Broome County. Is that where we used to get the business cards from before? Yes. Right. So we got a credit back from them for that amount of money. Okay, that explains it. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions on this page? Um, if there's no other questions, since we did an amendment, why don't we go ahead and prove page 14 um, as amended, um, if we get a motion to do that. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor to move page 14 as amended? Aye. 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 Anyone, opposed? Anyone opposed? Okay, so we had Councilman uh, Scringi on the motion and Councilwoman Residenti on the second for page 14. Okay, go ahead, Lee, to the clerk's office. Okay, so it's up to you, but uh, it is 6 p.m. if you want to jump over to the work session and then we can tackle this afterwards. 
Uh, President Scanlon, would you like to jump right to the work session right on time, or do you want to and come right back to, to page 24 when we come back? Why don't we stay at schedule with the work session right now, Phil, if you don't mind? Okay. Okay. So I'd like to uh, I'd like to take it a motion to adjourn this portion of the budget uh, budget hearing to go to the work session. So moved. So on Riley. Okay. Second. Council, Councilwoman Riley, um, motion. Councilman Scringy, second to adjourn. Um, I guess it would budget meeting number three, technically. And we will go now to the work session. All right. I'd like to start the uh, work session for Monday, October 19th. We already done the Pledge of Allegiance, so I won't do that again. Um, could we have a roll call, please, Lee? Yes. Uh, Councilman Scarendi? Present. Councilwoman Resnetti? Present. Councilwoman Riley? Present. Councilwoman Friedman? Present. Councilman Burns? Present. Councilman Strom? Present. And President Scamp? Present. That's all here. All right, do we have Charlie Pierce on the line? Yes, here I am. Hi, right, Charlie. Tell us about RL 20 one, please. Yes, the board has asked me to come in front of the owners, and in this case, the council, to ask for two transfers in the 2020 budget. The first one is for insurance on J81305400 in the amount of $32,000. We have sufficient revenue. Sufficient funding available in the chemicals line because we're spending less on methanol due to favorable pricing. So I would recommend it come from that line, which is 54150. And we also have a $2,000 increase in the furniture line, which is 52200. And that is driven by the library we have for the materials that's being transferred over to us now for the new buildings and equipment, and that's to properly store it and protect it. Questions or comments? Hearing none, bear with me one second. I lost the page. How's that? Thank you, Charlie. I appreciate it. Question you guys hear me? Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah, we can hear you, Tom. Excellent. Thank you, Chuck. All right, thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Um, tell, tell us about RL 120-202, please. Which one is that one, Tom? Off the top of my head, I don't remember which one it is. Contract with an insurance for medical coverage advantage plan. Okay. For all city councilmen, we have uh, two different types of insurance. We have insurance for active people and ones that are under 65. And retirees retire and they uh, qualify for our health insurance. Uh, when they turn 65, they go on a Medicare Advantage plan. Uh, this plan over the years has been very expensive. Uh, we hired a consultant, NFP. Uh, their representative, representative is on the call with us tonight. His name is Tom Soroka. We went out and marketed uh, our business very hard. And uh, that's pretty good rates and uh, I'm submitting to you that recommending that uh, we change from Excellus Insurance for the Medicare Advantage plan to Aetna. And I'll let uh, Tom and the guys from Aetna uh, go through the presentation so you understand what we're doing and what, what they have to offer us. Tom, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Chuck. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having us in. We're going to try to keep this clear and concise. As Chuck mentioned, we were giving the objective to help with finding a lower cost Medicare group plan for your 65 plus retirees with the goal of providing at least as good or better benefits for lower cost. In addition, I think it's always very important to make certain that everyone have access to the plan equally or as, as well as your current Excellus plan. We did a lot of work through this. Heather is also on the call with me. She's a, a one of our uh, lead account management associates and works with me very closely in providing uh, the marketing that took place and did an awful lot of work 
to ask each of the market participants, Aetna, United Healthcare, Humana, Excellus, and so on, to provide the residents of the city of Binghamton who are retired employees a great plan for lower monies than what they're paying today. Uh, I think, Heather, if, is there a way we can share with the folks uh, some of that analysis? Basically, what we did is it really came down to, and I won't uh, spend too much time on all the different details associated with it, but I can tell you that Excellus was at about $206 for a very nice plan. We went through a number of different uh, carrier proposals. I've worked with that in the past successfully. We were able to bring your monthly Medicare group plan rate down from 206 to $120, while at the same time providing better benefits in some cases, and certainly not lower benefits in any case. We also have with us Liz Sampo and Rob Gilmartin from Aetna. And they're going to help us to verify these facts, one and two, to answer any questions you may have. So is there is there something we can share with everyone or is there information we can provide so you can see it in, in paper form or in electronic form? Tommy, let me speak up here for a second. Lee, did you send out everybody the comparison of what Excellus used to offer and what Aetna is going to offer? Yes, we uh, forward that out right after you okay. sent it. Excellent. Okay. So you all have a copy of this. Tom, so if you or Liz want to walk through, and I wouldn't go through each line item, but anything that has a difference or there may perceive to be something different. Liz, I guess if I could just say that the current Blue Cross Excellus program has an annual out-of-pocket maximum of $1,250 per participant per year. Aetna's program actually is $750 in maximum out-of-pocket per year per participant. This is probably the primary difference between the two plans. We asked Aetna to mirror as closely as they possibly could. And in every case, they mirrored or in the case of the out-of-pocket actually uh, had a, a lower out-of-pocket for members, so therefore a better benefit. So I yes, guess Liz, right. I'll, sorry, Liz, sorry. I, I would ask you, Liz, if you don't mind, and, and Liz worked very hard on getting all of the things matched so that your retirees are receiving the benefits that they currently enjoy and wanted to make sure we continue to provide that level of benefit going forward. That's right. Can you hear me okay? Certainly can. Yeah, yes, we can hear you. Yes. Oh, okay. Super. So if you do have that benefit comparison uh, that Heather put together so nicely, um, right, you can see that in every category. The Aetna plan is going to be equal to uh, or better, uh, like uh, Tom described, uh, in every category for benefit coverage. We've been doing uh, group Medicare Advantage for over 20 years at Aetna. We have many, many, uh, many clients, millions of members, and we do have the flexibility to be able to match plan designs very, very closely, and that's what we've done. Uh, the one area that we are um, improving for members is that out-of-pocket maximum. So we'll improve that down to 750 rather than 1250 so that retirees would never be more than $750 out-of-pocket for medical expenses during the course of the year. Otherwise, everything under the plan is going to be uh, equivalent, okay, or actuarially equivalent across the board. So nobody would have a lesser benefit in any area. What questions might you as the council have? Are there questions or comments from anyone? Hi, this is Councilwoman Thank you for this um, coverage uh, spreadsheet. It helps us understand a lot more. I do have a question. 
Is there a calendar year max for our Medicare uh, beneficiaries? Yeah. In terms of, yeah. Okay. What so is the calendar you, year max? Are you saying in terms of benefit or out of pocket? Um, benefit and out of pocket coverage. <clears throat> well, no, out of pocket is seven fifty, but in right. terms of the coverage right. per year, yes. No, there's no benefit maximum. The plan will continue to pay whatever um, the covered benefits are, unlimited. Okay. And then secondly, someone is making noise on the mic. I'm having a hard time. Can you mute? Thank you. Um, when we look at our network of providers, uh, are they similar so that the beneficiaries will not find themselves having to find new practitioners? Yes, that's an excellent question. Thank you. And something that's always important when you're making the decision and when you're communicating, um, when, we're, when we're both communicating out to our new members. So there won't be any issue uh, with um, transitioning the members, they'll be able to work with their same Medicare providers that they're working with right now. We've proposed a program that's called Extended Service Area PPO. What that means is your retirees will have access to all Medicare providers nationwide. So it doesn't even matter if the Medicare provider that they're seeing is part of our network with Aetna or not part of our network members will have the exact same benefit. So it's kind of a little bit different than what they have now. They have a lower now, benefit a lower if they benefit. see providers that are outside a network. network. Under our plan, they won't. They'll Under be able to see plan, any Medicare provider. Okay. Um, thank you. I think that concludes my questions. Thank you. Are there questions or comments on this? Yes, this is Councilwoman Friedman. Hello, Councilwoman. Thank you, Mr. President. This is actually a question for Chuck. I was wondering why um, why this is expedited. Sorry about that, Avi. I was talking without my with my phone muted. Uh, it's being expedited because in order to get this thing started by January first and get everyone to have their cards and Get everybody enrolled. It's going to take a while to do this, and uh, if I push it off till November, it would not happen in January first. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I think it's it, it's a point. It's a point I'd like to make, and and I think when it comes to retirees, we want to make certain that people are comfortable, that they're getting their questions answered, and that we're transitioning people smoothly. And there's a good company that's done great work in this area, but if we get off on the wrong foot and have people waiting for cards to the point where they're getting them in mid-January, that doesn't work. We want to make sure that whenever we're, we're putting plans in place, that we have people's cards in hand, ready to use, questions answered, so that everyone feels good about what is happening. Mr. President, quick. Councilman Strong, go ahead. I just want to say I've worked with Tom's group before. They do a great job, and I know I know his group and Atna and, and Chuck have worked extremely hard on this. Um, so I appreciate all of their hard work. And this is also going to save, you know, it, it, this is, I, I mean, sometimes in this world you can't come ever come up with a win-win, but this really is one. It's going to save the city a lot of money, and it's going to provide our our people with better coverage. And um, I just think it's a, a so I want to appreciate everybody's work on this. But I just wanted to reiterate what's already been said. I mean, especially when you're talking about prescriptions and things like that. If you don't have that card, you have a temporary card, or you're scrambling for it, it's just a real, it's a real problem. It puts people in uncomfortable position. And, and if we can avoid that, I think we should we should try to avoid that at all costs. And and um, I think it's a no-brainer at this point because of the win-win to to do it anyway. So if we can just get it done and let guys get back to the the paperwork of getting all these people's um enrollments done then i think that, that that's wise to get it right done this week thank you Phil. i appreciate that and i'm not quite sure if you've received what really is being saved by the city but it's significant and i think it's important to recognize that 
the markets have changed drastically over the last 10 to 15 years. And we're able to take advantage now of national prominence that this carrier has. Excellus has approximately 100,000 members on group Medicare plan. Aetna has 2.5 million members on Aetna Medicare plans. So it's important to recognize that spread and that ability to work nationally and at a price that saves the city a substantial six-figure number. Mr. Soroka, this is uh, Councilman Scanlon. How, what's the dollar amount we're saving? Uh, well, we have, we, we have 440 members each month currently paying $206. We're taking them from 206 to 120. It accounts for close to $450,000. Well, that is a big number. You're 100 you right on that. It's, it's like Phil said, this is a truly really a no-brainer. I don't think um, you're saving money and your and the benefits didn't change, so it's a good deal. And then thanks for the work you and your group put in. We appreciate that, Mr. Scanlon. Anybody have a question on another question on RL20 or 120-202, uh, please? Tom, this is Chuck. I've got a couple of things that I want to make sure that everybody understands because I think it's important. Uh, the first one I'll ask uh, Liz to answer. Can you explain to them why you're able to do such a low price compared to what we've been currently paying and how the federal government works Medicare for you guys? Sure, sure. I'd be happy to. So. Um, so as Tom mentioned, Aetna has a national footprint with over 2 million Medicare Advantage members nationally. So that alone affords us the ability, just um, you know, scope of, of number of members affords us the ability to have uh, reduced pricing. But one of the most important things is our star rating. So the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services has a um, quality uh, grading program they call the CMS stars rating program and under that program uh, Aetna gets some of the highest ratings available of four and a half out of five stars this year and what that does is it allows the federal government to to provide higher reimbursements to Aetna and higher bonuses to Aetna and those bonuses Aetna cannot take those for um, for profit or you know put back into uh, into Aetna's pocket. That money goes uh, by law back into the program, either in uh, additional services or lower rates. So the better job we do keeping our members healthy, uh, happy, satisfied under the plan, uh, and getting all of their preventive care, uh, the higher the star rating we get the higher the bonuses and um, reimbursements we get from the federal government and the, um, the more consistently low our rates can be. So that's, uh, those are just some of the big reasons that our rates are, um, are very, very reasonable. But the, the rates that you see from us are not um, very different from our, our other upstate New York clients. Um, so um, it, it's that we're able to do this on a national scope. The, the other couple of questions I wanted city council to, to hear is uh, I've tried to figure out what is, we're gonna get some kickbacks from the retirees. There's no doubt on this. Uh, the first one is fear and fear itself, which I'll have to deal with that because uh, they've been in with Excellus pretty much their whole life. Uh, number two is, can you explain something about the drug card? Cause I, I not the drug card, but if someone's on a more expensive drug today and they've been on it for two years, Aetna's not going to go back and say, no, you got to go through the whole process again, correct? Right. That's exactly right. The Aetna Medicare uh, prescription drug plan has what they, what they call a transition of care program. And so there are a number of levers and ways that uh, we're very successful at transitioning new members into our plan, and we do transition, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of members every year into our plans very, very successfully. And so members who are on a drug now that might need a uh, uh, transition their drug, we're going to be talking about that during our education sessions that we're offering to hold for the members 
um, conference calls, webinars. We're also going to be communicating that um, transition in our member materials that go out, and we have award-winning member materials that are easy to understand and really communicate the, you know, the bullet points of the important facts. And one of those important things is transitioning the prescription drugs. So um, nobody's drugs will uh, fall through the cracks. Everyone will have a full transition. We're offering an open formulary. That means all Part D drugs will be covered, so nobody will find that their drugs are not covered at all under the plan either. You know, there's also something else I'd like to add to that, if I may. Uh, you may know that Aetna and CVS are actually together. Um, they've merged. And I think what's exciting about this is that when you when looking at your active plan, these are for your active employees, we find that a lot of medication utilization is happening at the CVS pharmacies. And just because they retire doesn't mean they stop going to CVS. And what I'd like to say is that going forward, we're going to keep a close eye on this. And because CVS and Aetna have pricing advantages, I'm actually hoping that this helps us going forward to build a pharmacy program that actually will benefit not only retirees, but the city continuously. Yep. Good point, Tom. Yep. We'll be looking at the reporting. We'll be able to provide reports to you about utilization, and we'll be able to help you in the future strategize on if you want to make changes to your retiree benefit plan according to the utilization or the need um, of, um, of the program specifically. So that's um, exciting things to come. And certainly with the merger with CVS and Aetna, uh, very exciting things on the prescription drug front. Does anybody else have, have any questions? Other questions? Questions on RL 20-202. All right, Chuck, you can start out. It's about 20-203. It's a contract with Excellus for Dental and Vision Administration. And Chuck, does this one need to be expedited also? No, that one does not have to be expedited. But Tom and Liz and Bob, thank you very much. Thank, thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank thank you. You. Thank you. Before we let go of Aetna, should we be asking about the, the term and do we want to discuss that while they're here? No, right we, don't, we, don't to, we don't have to deal with that now. now. We have to deal with city council on that, Ken. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you, Rob. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, council. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Tom, a couple of things that I wanted to uh, talk to you about on this uh, thing is when we do the budget, we're going to have to do a, a change to the budget because this was not part of this was incorporated in the budget, but uh, not all of it. Uh, a couple of real good aspects of this program is since we hired NFP, the guy's name is Tom Soroka, about four years ago, I think maybe three years ago, he has worked diligently. At one time, we were paying $460 a month for this insurance. Uh, he's gone out and marketed it, uh, and he's a Binghamton resident. He cares about taxes, and he's been very helpful here. Uh, I did not get the final numbers on this till Friday, so I'm sorry that I'm expediting it, but I called the mayor on Friday when we finally made a decision and said, this is what we're doing. Uh, Excellus, as you can see from the, pro the brochure I sent you, uh, they would only come down Chuck, to 150. Chuck, let, Chuck, let me interrupt for one second. It makes me wonder what the guy who was representing the city of Banton in this area did before. Because they all have access to the same carrier. They all have access to everybody. So it, basically, it tell me the guy that was handling this before wasn't doing anything. For, for this broker to go out and find these savings, it's, it's ludicrous to me that it wasn't, it wasn't done before. No, not necessarily. The marketplace has changed and there's certain promotions that are flexible based upon it, the you know, re reimbursement and things. Angel, you're, you're wrong about that because this market only goes up. Well, I'm wrong about that. I'm I'm wrong this about market only goes up. 
No, I, I beg to differ. Tom, All right, well. Tom let, me, let me try to explain this to you so you understand it. Uh, I tried to ask her to explain it to you, and I think she did if you were really listening to it. They get graded by how they handle Medicare claims. Aetna does a better job than Excellus, so they get better reimbursements. And they get bonuses and things like that, which helps reduce the cost. The other thing that I made sure of, because I want before we're going to make this change, is every company that we talk to, does, it doesn't matter which, who wins the election, whether it's the Republicans or Democrats, they basically say both people are happy with how this Medicare Advantage plan has been working over the years. And since it's all part of the old, I'll use the ACA uh, terminology, it keeps getting better and better because they're figuring it out how to make it work better. And by making them, before they used to only have to be belong to New York State, now they can go global, all U US, which gives them a bigger clientele base to hopefully control costs better. Uh, that's number one. Chuck, number two is, Chuck, you're not hearing me though because the, all these brokers have access to the same plan. And, and to for, go out and find these savings is, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me that this guy wasn't the broker before it wasn't finding these savings. Because that's a hell of a savings right there. It, it's a huge savings. But even last year, the best I could get from these guys was $186. Now, right. part, of, part, of what, part of what I told them, and they may have been, you know, playing the game here saying, okay, I'm not going to come in with a low cost because I know you're just using me as a benchmark for Excellus, okay? Uh, but this year I told them we will change because we're hurting for money. And when we did that, all of a sudden the competition became enormous for the, for the city's business. Right. I mean, what I found even at the home is that sometimes if you tell them you're willing to shop, like Chuck just said, they'll, I'm not saying they're business, but NFP has got a national footprint too. And sometimes if you if you let them know that you're willing to move, they'll they'll move too. So I think it was a combination of all those things. All right, let's move on. I mean, just so you all know, there will be retirees that will be upset. Just for the fear of changing, okay? And you may get a phone call, but they're saving $250, I think, a year, each one of them. This is okay. Councilwoman Wiley. I do think I was very happy to hear that they are willing to help them if there are medication related changes impacted by this change, because that's usually the primary concern when moving from insurance to insurance. 100% and that was, I was not gonna move this if they weren't willing to do this. Thank you. All right, Chuck, can we move on? Chuck, you weren't done with 203, were you? No, the next one is uh, lifetime benefits used to handle our internal, meaning active employees, dental and vision plan. Uh, they got bought out by Excellus, and they are getting out of that business. And I sort of thought that we were going to be in trouble uh, finding someone to do that uh, business for us. But Excellus said they will do it. Uh, and they'll keep the cost the same for this year and next year they're going to raise it to 11, 11 cents per person per month uh, which isn't huge uh, overall that that one does not have to be expedited as long as i get that signed up and uh, approved in uh, november that'll be fine questions or comments on 203 Chuck, is anything changing in terms of the coverages with this? No, they're keeping, they're keeping everything the same, Angela. I won't say it's going to be that way three years from today, but right now it is. They said they would keep it the same for two years. Other questions or comments? Tom, hey, before, Chuck. Tom before we move sure. on, Ken, are you still out there? Ken? Yes. You want to explain to them how we think we might want to write this RL up for tomorrow, for Wednesday? Uh, 
So the first question is, do we want to build in a renewal? Right, obviously, a, a lot of times working with these companies, they're, they're happier knowing that, you know, they, they hopefully will have a long-term relationship. Obviously, if the numbers aren't good, Chuck or whoever the controller is, is going to do the exact same thing again and go shop it over. But do we want to renew it or do we want to do this you know, on a on a year by year basis? Uh, it doesn't mean we can't back out of it, right? It would be a renewal on, on mutual agreement, but it wouldn't come back to council every year. And what Ken and I have talked about, let's just say that right now the price is $120. If we're within 5% of that next year, and I feel comfortable with that number of whoever's in my position, they can just renew the contract for another year. So is there a percentage break that we can put into the legislation that council feels confident with without us coming back every year? What's, what's the concern with you coming back to council every year? What's the concern about that? I don't necessarily say there's a concern. It's just the, uh, I don't want to say it. It's, a, it's an uncertainty. <laughs> Yeah, it tends to make companies a little a little more nervous. That's all. Most of our contracts have some renewal period, but it's up to council. I'm, I'm, so I don't I don't I mean I I don't see a problem coming back to council every year. But if if the other people think there is, then speak up, please. This is Councilwoman Friedman. Yes, Councilwoman. Thank you, Mr. President. I um, I would like to echo what what you said. Is there any is there any drawback from our perspective about renewing it every year? Because it seems sure. that there's oh. You know, it seems like I can understand from the company's perspective, they might have uncertainty, but from our perspective, is there any drawback? Well, uncertainty can cause higher prices. That, that, that's, that, that's the concern. Correct. Mr. President? Yes, Councilman Scrangey, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, so I, I think it's important to make a distinction here. I'm, I'm fairly certain, and Chuck, please tell me if I'm wrong, but the 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 words come back to council does not mean lack of council review or keeping council informed in situations like this some short term extension on time incentivizes the firm to keep costs more proportionate which also benefits us. So given that reality, particularly with the economic environment we're in, and I obviously can't speak for anyone else, but I am comfortable, I'm comfortable uh, moving that forward with that in the RL. Now, creates a lot of, let's, let's assume, let's assume we you did an RF, P out there next year for this health district, the same thing we're talking about. It creates a lot of work for you as a controller? Yes. I've been doing this since the beginning of September. I can't tell you how many well, meetings I've had with multiple places, talking about this, learning about it. But here's the advantage is, if you come to me next year and say, we'll give it to you for 122, and I can tell them, okay, I'm spot. I don't have to go to council, it's going to make it easier on all parties to move this thing forward. Council President. Yes, Councilwoman Riley, this, please. Yes. So, what are the terms of adding for the contract regarding the Medicare Advantage plan? What type of language is going into that RL? Say that again, Councilman Riley. Um. So we are, this is a similar renewal process to the contract we're negotiating or initiating with Edna, correct? What yes. are the terms that are being written into that contract or that article? They're going to be a one year contract. As well. So, yes. so what is the, why the impetus 
why the concern about this particular um, enrollment, this insurance, this RL, compared to the one we spoke about a minute ago? Well, the, well, one, the one that you talked about with Excellus is a two year deal. Right. Okay. For three years. All right. And Mr. President, if I can note that that was noted earlier in the discussion. All right. So, Aetna, Aetna is looking to keep prices at a bare minimum the same for two years. So, putting this time extension kicker in the discussion of the current contract, again, is going to provide that levity moving forward beyond the one-year term. Chuck, is 5% is increase, is that enough to point to uh, as far as your... Yeah, if it was higher than 5%, I would want to come to you guys. All right. Well, I, I could certainly, and everybody else speak up here, I could certainly live with 5% increase. And you would renew it as far as the, the comptroller renewed it. I would have no issue with that, with a 5% increase cap. Everybody else speak up, please. Anybody else have an opinion on that? I guess no opinion on that. I guess we can move forward with that, that in mind then. Chuck, so um, this is Councilwoman Riley again. So we will see the amended language uh, for this RL prior to the two week review and voting, correct? I believe that's so. For Chuck, or, that's, that's for Chuck. Chuck but I, 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 I'm not sure. What language you read? I mean, the the agreement with Aetna will either say that it can be renewed or not. I apologize. I'm not sure what, what the question what, is. The question is, because we are adding additional stipulations to this rule that we're discussing verbally, will we see the final document in writing um, before, any, before we read before we host another set of work sessions, just so we can review it in anticipation of the next work session and voting session and business meeting, because this is not an expedited RL, but I would like to see the, the proposed language. As, as, okay, Chuck, is, isn't it not an expedited RL? Yes, it is an expedited RL. Yeah, I can have the language for you tomorrow morning. It's drafted. I just needed to know the answer to this question. Right. And Exilus, the one we're talking about right now, is not. And that's the one that will have the amended terms and the additional language regarding if there happens to be a 5% increase, it returns to council. So I'm specifically talking about RL 20-203. Really, I, I believe what you're asking, Ken will have that to you in the morning. We were talking about it today. The RL is pretty much written up. We just had to figure, answer a couple questions of how we wanted to do it. And he'll put it, anything over 5% would have to come back to council. Okay, so we will see that language tomorrow as well. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions on 2203? All right, thanks, Ken. Thanks, Chuck. Is Miss Burling out there? Hi, yes I am. Hi, how are you? Um, can you tell us about 20-204, please? Yes, absolutely. Um, we are hoping to enter into a service agreement with the CNY Fair Housing to provide housing rights and assistance to avail the education for um, completing a section of our city's rise grant requirement. So they will be hopefully um, preparing the training, coordinating training, and um, advertising as well. Um, we have five different educational topics, and we have a, a list of groups that we're targeting. It's also going to be open to the public. So it's a $15,000 service agreement for this work. 
that will be um, funded through our city's drive grant. Questions or comments, please? No questions on RL204. Okay, and I, I did ask for it to be expedited so we could get it started. Why does it need to be expedited, Julia? So we can so we can get it going. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, so I, we, we I, I to, get it. Good. Is okay. It, we had to put it on hold because of you know COVID issues, and we're ready now. So. I see. Okay. All right. Is there any questions on uh two oh four? Go ahead, Councilwoman Riley. Yes. Hi, um, Juliet. How are you? I'm um, fine. How are you? Good. Are you able to share with us the tentative calendar and topics? that will be shared um under this grant and the public i have the uh topics i don't have a, a schedule yet we're hoping to hold them um each topic to be held for a, a month it might be shorter than that we had originally scheduled um four in-person training you know sessions so now that they're online we may be able to just do that a little quicker but the topics are basically, um, one is regarding uh, building code and construction feedback, um, positives and negatives um, that people are encountering, uh, housing safety issues that they are all out. Um, we're looking for immediate concerns and areas that we can focus resources on. Um, housing availability and resource availability, what resources are available for tenants and for homeowners right now, um, and then housing and tenants rights, which is a, something that we we offer, but we didn't offer it this year. But normally we hold those sessions also. Um, let's see, and then uh, uh, an educational topic regarding neighborhood needs. So it's one thing for us to say that they need adequate housing and people do need that, but there might are there are also additional needs. So now are these going to be smaller and more um interactive? Or are they webinar based? Will there be a cap? No. Well, they're currently webinar, well, they were designed to be in person with an activity. Um but right now I've asked for that the had the uh, education to be designed as an online uh webinar. And we're hoping to have it as interactive as possible with um, online uh, surveys uh, and answering questions and um, using the chat section. So this is where CNY is going to use their expertise. Um, they said they've they've created they have a format for online webinars that are good at collecting information, not just presenting it. So. Perfect. So there will not be a cap. No. Not if it's online. If it's in person, we'll, you know, of course, Perfect. we have to have him. Yeah, absolutely. Other questions on 204? Yes, uh, Joe yes, Burns. This is oh. Councilman Burns here. Um, how will you advertise? Well, yeah. again, that's something that CNY will do for us. Um, we want to use all forms of marketing. Um, not just online but mailers and flyers we have a in the uh, agreement i have a we have a targeted list of um groups that we're hoping to work with um i could read them off unless you have it in front of you we're looking to work with the broom tioga and the american civic association action for older persons um the different municipal senior centers i think there's four YWCA, Catholic Charities, Fairview Recovery, uh, Addiction Center, Broom County, Southern Tier AIDS Program, Southern Tier Independence Center, Safe Streets, um, North of Maine, and the Lee Barta Community Center. So we will be um, creating online marketing as well as uh, flyers and mailing and um, sending information to these groups specifically awesome. to help get the word out. Thank you. Any suggestions? I'm, I'm good. Always use them. I'm sure we'll all support and spread the word as well. Excellent. Councilwoman Freeman, do you have a question? Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I was wondering if there will be any incentives for community members to participate in the program 
besides, of course, the knowledge that they will gain from this? Mm, uh, no, not specifically. We, no. <laughs> Sorry, that really wasn't budgeted into this. This was an educational session, not a community engagement, which is what we held previously. We used that data to help um, target our grant application. So this is mostly education and um, bringing resources to people. Okay, we'll just have to advertise it real well then. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. But if it was in person, we could provide babysitting and you know snacks and things like that. But a, a webinar, I'm just not sure how that would work. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, everything is is different it's now. Just different. Everything's different now. Yeah. Right. All right. Thanks. Yep, absolutely. Other questions? Other questions on 204? Thank you, Ms. Berling. All right. Thank you, guys. Leader Grace, can you read Penny's legislation, please? Uh, yes. Okay. So, for pending legislation, um, we just have four items here. 196 is amending the 2020 sewer budget to fund. Serial bond interest due to refinancing of the 2012 bond. Uh, the next one is 198, which is an application and acceptance of the Edward Byrd Memorial Justice uh, Assistance Program for FY 2020. 199, authorizing the sale of 106 Park Ave. Uh, 200, amending the 2020 budget to pay for the demolition of 34 Burr Ave. And just a friendly reminder to everyone, uh, you're all sponsors on all the legislation that was presented tonight and until you let us know otherwise. So if you want your name off anything, just remember to email Grace or I, okay? Thank you, Lee. All right, so the the public hearing on the budget. Um, I talked to Lee today. The press has to have lead time and Lee needs five days. I'll be advertised for five days if I'm saying that right, Lee, to, uh, to make it work. So the public hearing is going to be on the 27th, which is a week from tomorrow. We'll have to have a special meeting. Then we'll vote. I can I think the our last day to vote on this is the 30th of October. Is that correct on the budget? And a reminder Chuck, what you, you know that? And you need to sign it out. There has to be a sign out sheet for legislation, just like all legislation going to the floor. So we okay. need to do that, and then you have to give five days public notice before the hearing. So you would have to approve it tomorrow night if you're going to have it on the 27th. All right, Lee, I'll have, uh, Lee, you get a hold of the council people and make sure that it gets approved for the 27th, please. Right. Um, so my plan for there, so that the public hearing by the 27th, the, the vote will be to approve the budget by city council will be on the 29th. Um, the days we're kind of squeezed into here because the 30th, I believe, is the last day we can vote on this budget. So I want to have the vote on the 29th. This is Councilwoman Friedman. Can I ask a clarifying question? Sure. Okay, so uh, thank you, Mr. President. So the 27th, you said, I don't have a calendar in front of me, but that's a week from today, so that's a Monday? It's a Tuesday, it's a week from tomorrow. A week from tomorrow. Okay, so it's a Tuesday, and that will be a special meeting, and then the meeting on the 29th, is that that will also be a, a special meeting? To approve the budget, yes. Okay, so um, let's say if the public hearing is on the 27th, um, how, how would we then go about incorporating any appropriate public um, amendments? Would we then, at the meeting on the 29th, someone, we would do the reconsideration process where someone who voted in the majority would have to make a motion to bring a budget line back to the floor and then we would make all the amendments then and then vote on it on the 29th? That's correct. We could do it that 29th, we can have in that meeting, we can certainly discuss something else if somebody wants to try to open a page back up. Sure, okay, 
You can and also if there are, let's say, I'm sorry, Ken, what did you say? I, said, I mean, you can also discuss it on the 27th. You know, after the public hearing, you can certainly, you know, have your have your meeting. Right, that's, that's fine. We do it there too, Ken, that's fine. We can, I got a feeling it's gonna be a long public comment section, but we certainly can do it after the public comment section on 27th or the 29th, it doesn't matter, either way. This is Council Woman or, Ryan. Or both potentially. I'm sorry? I was just asking, could we theoretically do it on both days as well? Like if something if we, uh, if we, comes if we, up. Yeah, if we needed to, we certainly could. Councilwoman Friedman. Okay. All right. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure, because from reading the budget process, it really seems like there's not much structured in there to incorporate the public's opinion. So I'm glad to hear that there's at least, I mean, I know the timeline is, is crunched together, but there's at least a few days where we can incorporate what our constituents um, comments are. Councilman Riley, you have a question? Yes, thank you, Council President. I just wanted to say that I do appreciate the, the date set aside to vote separate from the public comment period. Um, I do agree with you that we may have a lot of comments and feedback, and it will give us some time after seeing the public to deliberate and come back on the 29th to make amendments and vote, as you suggested. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I will uh, take a motion to adjourn this meeting so we get back into the budget hearings. So moved. So moved. And Riley. Okay, hey, we're adjourned. Lee, I'll turn it over. Or, uh, I'll turn it over back to you, uh, Phil. Okay. All right, everyone. We're going to take about five or six minutes right now to take a quick break, and we um, so six six fifty two. Will you be back here before seven o'clock? Okay. Thanks. Okay. Lee, Lee, you're going to leave the lines open, right? So you can self mute. Everybody should self mute themselves. Correct. Everyone should self mute. I'll uh, I'll set the time to uh, you. Okay, we'll take a roll call then. I'll see you guys in a couple of minutes. All right, thank you.
Let's see who's back in. It's been about six minutes. I'm here, Lee. Thank you. Grace, can you turn your screen on? Yeah. Yeah, let's back. Thank you. I'm back, Lee. How are you? Hi, this is Councilwoman Friedman. I'm back and I have a warm cup of coffee, so I'm in a good mood too. Oh, I'm jealous. <laughs> Well, as long as we're telling everything, I'm back with another glass of wine, so everybody's happy. I knew Scandal was going to talk about <laughs> me. <laughs> Whatever you guys need to approve the clerk's budget is fine with us. Ken Frank is back. Thanks, Ken. Chuck is back. Councilman Strawn, whenever you're ready. I'm not sure he's back, Lee. There we go. Everybody here? I think so. All right, Lee, we take a roll call for us to restart. I guess we'll call it budget meeting uh, three, three A or four, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> All right. So, Councilman Sturgey, present. Councilwoman Resnetti, present. Councilwoman Riley, present. Councilwoman Friedman, present. Councilman Burns, he's here. <laughs> Amazing. We'll take uh, it. Councilman Strawn. Present. <laughs> that was and, good. Uh, President Scanlon. Present. That's all seven. Okay, everyone, thanks. We had already opened up um, all the pages for Lee's section. So um, we, uh, we have approved page 14 already, and we're on page um, 24 and 25, Lee. So go ahead with that. Right. Thank you. Okay, so on uh, at the top of page 24, we have personal services. Um, so this part's a little interesting as it relates to city council. Uh, so the city clerk and the deputy clerk are in sort of a unique situation here where our salaries are actually set directly by city council. And this year we did, uh, we were hoping to ask for uh, a salary adjustment, but with everything going on, we felt it would be really irresponsible to take a raise this year. And um, so we requested no increase for 2021. Um, however, that being said, uh, I do understand that uh, our positions, the city clerk and deputy clerk, uh, 
there's an argument to be made that we are uh, substantially underpaid from where we should be. And um, uh, should any money come in, I mean, we definitely might. We'll definitely want to talk to you guys and sit down and, and see if we can work out an increase of some sort or some sort of hourly adjustment. But um, I just, I didn't want you guys to be blindsided when and if uh, we do come back and ask for a raise because uh, it is something that we were hoping to do this year, but with the pandemic and um, revenues down across the board, we just didn't feel that this was the right time to ask for one. But um, I mean, part of that, I'd like to talk about this for a minute or two, but uh, part of the reason we think uh, a race would be important is because it, it has been difficult retaining employees. Uh, we've been through a lot of deputy clerks in the last decade here. Um, I've lost track, but I think Grace is probably our 10th deputy clerk in the last 10 years, which is pretty astounding. Um, this, I'm actually the longest serving city clerk, I think, maybe since Howard Duco, who was serving, you know, 20 years ago at this point. So there's been a lot of turnover in the office. It's hard to keep consistency. Um, and when you compare our salaries to other clerks in upstate New York, of cities that are of a similar size, we don't even compare to those. Um, when you compare our salaries with other clerks right here in Broome County, we're, again, we don't stack up very well to those either. And uh, even within City Hall, I mean, you guys are getting a pretty good deal on me because I am the cheapest, I'm the lowest paid department head in City Hall by a bit of a landslide at this point. Um, if you transferred my salary to other departments, oftentimes I come in at even below the, the deputies rate. Um, my, for example, and I don't mean to pick on one department over another, but if you pick a department at random, uh, the economic development department, all of their employees, they have, uh, uh, they have somebody helping out with HUD right now, but I mean, they have, Basically, all of their employees make more than me at this point. So I'm a department head who is really quite cheap at this point. And um, I'm happy to talk to all of you individually about that. Uh, other other clerks in, in Broome County, even in Vestal, for example, they have more staff than we do. Uh, their clerk makes about 15 grand more than I do. Um, and they have half the population of the city of Bankton. So I just wanted to touch on that. But for, for right now, we're not asking for a raise. And then um, also here in our personal services line, uh, you'll notice the senior account clerk is unfunded for now. Um, this is sort of similar to what Ken was talking about with his legal typist, where if we do come across the money uh, from the federal government, uh, there's a chance we'll come back to city council and try to talk to you guys about staffing in the clerk's office, because we, we really are working on a bare bones staff right now. And um, any questions on the personal services? Yeah, Lee, I have a question. Yes, this is I, assume, I assume the bingo inspector isn't being paid now because there's no bingo, right? Um, Chuck, I'm not sure if you want to touch on that, but I, I know the bingo inspector was, did voluntarily forgo his paycheck for uh, right. some time. That, that's all I need then. I'm, I'm good, thanks. Okay. President Scalin, I didn't quite hear yet. Chuck, I was asking about the bingo inspector. I assume he's not being paid right now because there's no bingo. You can say that and you cannot say that. I mean, he's got a job. There's a lot of people over the last nine months that have uh, 
had to work from home and couldn't work from home and got paid. So okay, all right. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. It's not a it's not a ton of money. I just was curious. I thought on. He he did elect to uh, not take money for a while, but then he asked for it back when he thought he was going to go back to work. Yep. All right. I'm just curious. That's all. It's not a ton of money. I'm just curious. Thank you. This is Councilwoman Riley. Yes. Go ahead. Um, so this senior account clerk that is unfunded is has it been? Um, how long have you been without this position? Uh, it's it's been a while now. It's been about two years. Uh, we did finally get this position approved uh, to have the job posted so we could start interviewing people. Unfortunately, it was approved and posted right around March 1st of this year. And then uh, once the pandemic hit, we were on a hiring freeze. So we weren't able to actually interview anyone for the position. And now it's unfunded for 2021. Thank you. Councilman Burns, I think you need, I think you deserve a raise. Thank you. But then um, there's not much else on this page here. Well, I there any have, other questions? Yes, I do have a few more questions. This is Councilwoman Riley again. Sure. Um, so the professional services, translation services for meetings to ensure that we are compliant with ADA requirements, particularly these web-based. Have we been uh, transcribing what, say, what we are saying for the public and what, and in what meetings have we been using this service that we've expended $155 so far? So the translation services, so that's, like you said, that's uh, sort of a state mandated service that we need to prepare for. Um, uh, we did use a translator for a uh, wedding that came in. Um, and that was actually a hearing impaired person that needed an interpreter. But yes, that is money that we set aside every year. Uh, typically, we don't uh, we don't end up spending the money, but because it's state mandated, we want to make sure it's there in case someone comes in. This is Councilwoman Friedman. Yes. Uh, so, as a follow up to that question, I know that there are some web based. Uh, or webinar providers that have the technology where they will provide real-time closed captioning. I've attended a few webinars like that uh, because it seems like $700 would not be enough to have, for example, an American Sign Language interpreter at every meeting. But uh, if our meetings are not ADA compliant and I'm not very, very familiar with those laws, but it seems like maybe our meetings right now are not. I'm wondering if in lieu of an ASL interpreter, we could maybe look into some kind of live closed captioning or some other way um, to make sure that our meetings are ADA compliant and accessible to people who are um, deaf or hard of hearing. Um, absolutely, yes, closed captioning would be a good thing. Uh, we could definitely look into that. Um, but there are, you know, various situations in our office where we do need an interpreter or uh, some sort of translation service uh, outside of just council meetings. But yes, closed captioning is something uh, we should look into. Okay, and one final I question. Also Oh, no, you go ahead, Councilwoman. You sure? 
All right. Um, legal ads. Can you give me an example of, of what falls in this category under the city clerk? Yeah, so we do um, we do a lot of legal notices with the Press and Sun. Uh, all of our bonding, those all require legal notices. Um, this budget, believe it or not, requires a legal notice uh, for the public hearing. And uh, those are pricey. And 900 is about right for what we typically spend. Thank you. This is Councilwoman Friedman. Yes. Uh, I have one last question. There are two budget lines here, the office supplies and the travel and training, where um, we haven't spent a lot of money, but we have, we have uh, way more money budgeted than we have proportionately spent. I'm wondering if both of those are related to COVID, um, the decreases in the amount that we've spent. Um, so in 2019, on the office supply line, we actually went over. Um, and I know we haven't spent a whole lot here up until uh, October 2nd. I know we just put in a big order in the last two weeks here for our office. Um, and then one of the one of the big purchase items we wanted to make this year was an actual uh, cart to help with records management. So we're constantly moving boxes from one end of the building to the other or to the loading dock. And um, I, the clerk's office doesn't even have a cart right now. I've been borrowing other departments' carts. So we're hoping to purchase one of those towards the end of the year. We just want to make sure we have enough money to do so. And then the travel and training line, uh, the New York State Clerks uh, Association Conference, uh, they have one every year. Um, this year, uh, they, they did end up canceling it, but um, I've been clerk for four years now and I get to attend a conference because we always seem to get busy around that, that time of year. Um, but uh, at some point we would like to attend the conference, either Grace and I or both of us. Okay, thanks. I hope you get to go to a conference too. <laughs> Yes. Okay. And then if there's no more questions, we can move on to uh, page 31. Uh, page 31 is our elections cost. So we actually outsource our the administration of our elections, just like every other town in Broome County, to the Broome County Board of Elections. And they have been charging us a flat rate for four years now uh, of 61.049. So that cost is not going up next year. Um, but I do expect it to go up the year after that. Okay. Any? We good on that page? Yes. Um, 64 animal control. Okay. And this one, uh, there's not a whole lot of changes from last year. It's about the same. Our uh, our doctoral officer, he's operating on kind of a minimal budget. Um, the uh, the animal shelter where. Um, we're on a five-year contract with them. I think we're three years into it. So that goes up by CPI every year. Uh, so that's why there's a bit of an increase there with the uh, Front Street Dog Shelter. Any questions on animal control? Okay, thanks, Lee. Um, do I have a motion to approve pages 24, 25, 31, and 64? So, so moved. moved. Second. Second. 
who, who did the motion? Gio got the second. Who, who motioned? That was Angela Riley. Okay, thanks, Councilwoman Riley. Okay, all in favor of approving uh, moving those pages? Aye. 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 Anyone, anyone opposed? Okay, uh, Lori and Ken, that's uh, Councilwoman Riley uh, motion and Councilman Scaringi on the second for, for those pages. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thanks, Lee. Appreciate it. Um, Lee, I just want to mention that uh, I didn't say much there, but I, you, you're, um, I, I, I appreciate you being honest with us and being able to, it's hard sometimes to talk about yourself. You do a great job and um, we will definitely, in my opinion, keep that under ad ad advisement when, uh, you know, along with other, other, you know, other things across this budget, if we were able to get some funding and, and at some point we'll have to consider that whether we get additional funding or not, but I appreciate your willingness to say that. Like I said, sometimes it's hard to, to be in that position, but but uh, but I heard what you said, and I'm sure all of us did, and and I uh, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, is Lori out there? Yes, I am. Okay, I'd like to officially open pages 42, 43, page 200, as it as it uh, applies to info management and technology, and uh, 32 records management. Go ahead, Lori. Okay, we'll start with page 42. On that line, uh, my staff is all filled. Overtime we reduced from $1,500 to $500. My staff usually takes comp time when they work overtime. The general operating supplies I reduced by almost $3,000. Printing stays the same. Wireless fees were reduced by about $5,000. We uh, reevaluated devices, took out what we didn't need to save money. The parking kiosk fee services line, there is zero. That money was transferred to the treasurer's office. We talked with John about that on the first night. Those expenses belong there now. Um, security services, that's our contract with Broome County for after hour security. You'll see there's money encumbered. I've encumbered it for the year and there's still bills that they haven't billed us for last year but we've spent hardly anything because there's no after hours meetings so that money will go back into the budget technical services decrease substantially again because we transferred some of those expenses to the treasurer's office uh, hardware software maintenance the it increased a little bit from the prior year this is this is all the hardware software maintenance subscription fees for every piece of software that the city uses across all of the departments travel and training we haven't spent anything this year any um training classes that we found have been free this year but uh, beginning next year again i'd like to send my staff for training and the subscription dues and memberships this is a subscription to the water isaac um website any questions yes this is councilwoman friedman Yes. Um, first of all, I want to say that looking through your department budget, you did a great job at really cutting cutting it down. Um, I know that probably must have been really hard to do, but I just I want to say that I <laughs> I would like to acknowledge that I know that must have been difficult. Um, my you. question is about the. Um, meeting streaming. So I know that we started doing the go to webinar or the live streams of the meetings because we can't have meetings in person. I personally think that we should continue to do this even when we can meet in person just to increase the accessibility and transparency of our meetings. And I was wondering if anywhere in your department budget there was the required uh, hardware or software or like web hosting um, so that we can continue to do this into next year and beyond. Yes, I've added the subscription for the go to webinar, go to meeting subscriptions for all our meetings. We've also already purchased the large monitors, the sound bars and the microphones for both the work session room and council chambers. And as soon as we are closer to Going back to live meetings, we'll purchase the cameras that are most up to date at that time and we'll be ready to go. We will continue doing the format. We're doing them right now. Okay, that sounds great. So those cameras are 
would be in the hardware budget. They're, those no, are already budgeted for. They'll be in when the next page we'll go to is my capital line where I put all my equipment. The money is put in there for it. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. You're welcome. If there's no other questions, you want to go to page 200? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Page 200 is the information technology section. Um, I have four separate lines there. The first line is the city, citywide hardware software. That is all the computers, servers, access points, firewalls, switches, modems, everything that we use in City Hall, except for police and fire. So this year I'm asking for 56,000, which is a reduction from 81,000 I requested last year. Engineering hardware, we are putting a little, we're putting $8,000 aside every year to replace the plotter and engineering. That's a very expensive piece of equipment, so we don't want to hit the budget at one time. We This will be the third year, so I think two more years we'll have enough to replace that plotter. So we'll just keep budgeting on an annual basis for that. Fire hardware, I'm only requesting $1,000. I dropped that from 13 thousand five hundred from last year we've replaced all the computers in the fire department a thousand dollars will give me just for anything that breaks police hardware i'm requesting 2500 that's a reduction from twenty eight thousand the previous year we have upgraded every computer in the police department but one and the printers are good and i have a little bit of money left from this year so we should be good for next year Any questions? Okay, do you want to go back to page 32 is the records management page? Okay. Okay, this page, the rent or lease line, this is where we pay the rent of the storage area at Rogers for our paper records. We do not store them here, we house them at, at Rogers. And the other line is our shredding line when records need to be shredded, either what is stored at Rogers or what we have in City Hall that is ready to be shredded, that Lee takes care of its paid for out of this line. Any questions? Mr. President, I'll make a motion to approve move pages 32, 42, 43, and 200 as it relates to IT. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor of uh, moving those pages? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Thank you, Lori. Um, thanks Thank for you. being organized. I know you help with a, the, a lot of this, so you're you're good at it, but but you did a great job on the budget itself and uh, presenting it, so thank you for that. Thank you. Um, Lori and thank Kendall, you, Lori, for all your work. Yep, thank you. We had Councilman Scaringi on the motion and Councilwoman Riley on the second for those pages for IT. Thank you. Okay, we got Jared with us. Can you hear me? Yeah, all right, hold on, Jared. I'd like to officially open pages 15 to 16, Mayor's Office, and pages 45, Municipal Association Dues, 67, Vital Statistics, 84, Celebrations, and 83, Library. Go ahead, Jared. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Council. Um, I've got uh, several different areas that uh, we're responsible for. I'll start with um, the mayor's office budget itself. Um, one of the big differences this year in personal services is that we're uh, bringing down the lead agency project manager uh, to a shorter uh, time period. Uh, we do not believe that that position will be needed for the entirety of 2021, uh, but uh, may be needed as the project transitions at the Joint Sewage Treatment Plant from uh, rehabilitation operations to actually plant management. There's still a lot of paperwork that needs to be done, funding to fight for, et cetera. So that uh, is regarding the big difference in, in personnel services. Uh, as was noted before, uh, no raises as part of uh, this year's budget uh, for the mayor. Um, 
in addition, uh, for some of the new folks on city council, um, where the costs are for the Lee Barta Community Center is in the mayor's office budget. So that's where you see the Barta Center heat and electricity, as well as um, you know building improvements, maintenance, as part of the Barta Center at 108 Liberty. Uh, those amounts are guided by an agreement we have with United Way, who leases the, the building for its, uh, its services uh, as well. So those are the those are the big changes in uh, the mayor's office budget for for 2021. Are there any questions for Jared on the mayor's budget? mayor's office budget? I should say. Okay, why don't, you, why don't you go ahead? Okay, going to vital or municipal associations and dues. This is to fund the city's uh, membership to the New York Conference of Mayors, which is a municipal organizations that uh, represent cities and villages uh, across New York State. And uh, Mayor David happens to be the current uh, NICOM president at this point. Can I just throw in, uh, NICOM is not just something that the mayor belongs to. It's a resource that is used throughout the city. We actually contact them frequently. And when I spoke earlier about getting a lot of free CLE classes, most of those were through NICOM because we were members. And NICOM's resources are available too to uh, city council as well. Uh, Jared, it's uh, Councilman Burns. Where do we see what those are? Where can we see what those are? Um, I think their website is nycom.org, um, nycom.org. Um, they have a, a lot of different resources in, in terms of uh, reports, um, trainings, surveys on a number of different uh, municipal disciplines. Um, we can, if you want to Offline, we can get you the, the different information to get you the documents and trainings, resources that they have. Cool, thanks. This is Councilwoman Friedman. Go ahead. Uh, I was, oh, thanks. I was wondering, so this $3,000 under the travel and training, is that covers city council's membership in NICOM? Are you referring to A1210.54107? Uh, 54701. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. That would be travel and training um, for, for the mayor's office uh, budget. So that would okay. include NICOM meetings, U.S. Conference of Mayor meetings. Uh, we reduced it heavily this for next year, you know, assuming that there'll be less in-person uh, meetings in, for 2021 compared to previous years. Okay, so when you said that city council has access to the NICOM resources, do we have memberships there that's covered in the budget? The, the city has a membership which is funded through the uh, municipal associations and dues that covers all of the cities so uh, again that website nicom.org they have publications uh, they put on trainings um, for municipal employees this is for cities and villages across uh, new york state so that that subscription that we have grants the city uh, free uh, access to that um, information Okay, I see. Because I've so been on that website pay. before. Remember, I didn't realize I had a memory. Things. Right. No, that's good to know because I, I visited the website before and I didn't realize that we, you know, some of the information or the resources are restricted to members, but I yep. didn't realize we have members. We can absolutely that, get you that's that, great. that information. This is Councilman Burns. Um, Yes, Jared, I would like that information about the membership as well. Okay.
um, if we, I, I don't, I'm not sure if we're still on the membership dues or we want to move to the next section, I think is maybe vital. Well, go ahead to vital statistics. Okay. So a uh, vital statistics um, is a department that falls within the, the mayor's office. It has one full-time employee and one uh, employee that's shared with the city clerk's office. This is for the registry of birth and death certificates within the city of Binghamton, as well as how uh, residents can procure them if they need a certified copy. Um, if you, uh, earlier in the budget in the revenue section, A41603, see that 66,500 is budgeted for vital statistics fees. These are the, the monies that are received every time a constituent wants to get a certified copy or a registration of a, a birth or death certificate is made. So it's a you know, very small department, really only office supplies and printing um, and the one and a half personnel uh, to provide the birth and death certificates. Operations. Okay, this is um, uh, part of what funds uh, large-scale uh, community events as it relates to community event sponsorship, um, events such as a parade day, uh, the ACA All Nation celebration, and notably LUMA is the uh, main source of, of this funding. We did have it uh, split in the past between parade expenses and community events. We just thought it made made sense just to have it in in one line. But uh, when the city does make sponsorships, again, primarily of an event like Luma, this is where the money would come from. This is Councilwoman Friedman. Um, can you? Sorry, Ines. Um, so I noticed that in the community events line, we have spent all of the the seventeen thousand five hundred dollars. What what was that event on? Um, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe that was Luma, the digital experience they had this year. I see. Okay, I was just surprised to see that. Pleasantly surprised. Yep. No other questions, we could probably move to the library on page 83. Yep. So um, some 20 years ago when the new library was built downtown, the city and county entered into an agreement by which the city would provide uh, certain operation funding for the joint public library. Um, I won't get into too much detail, but the city used to fund satellite libraries. Uh, Councilman Scanlon, you probably remember the one on Robinson Street on the east side there for a couple years um, and as part of a new centralized downtown library the city of Binghamton provided operating funds to Broome County uh, this is not insignificant as you'll see in the 2021 proposed budget north of $761,000 that represents a huge part of the the library's operating budget this is set by agreement so uh, we need to honor that agreement um, the, the library under normal circumstances is actually the most visited attraction in Broome County with some 295,000 visitors per year. So that's bringing those individuals into the downtown area. Um, and you know, we think it's a really important investment. Uh, again, knowing that you know more and more that this is becoming a larger part of the revenue for the Joint Public Library. So that's something for everyone to kind of just be knowledgeable about um, but you know, one that's set by agreement uh, signed many years ago. This is Councilwoman Riley. Um, thank you for that information, Jared. Uh, I love the library. What is our percentage of the contribution? What so this seven hundred thousand represents? What percentage of that's in the agreement? Um, so the agreement was set at a certain dollar amount, which increases by CPI every year. So it wasn't always 761000 and it's not driven by percentage of the operating budget. It was a, a dollar amount that was set, you know, some 20 years ago 
that's been increasing by CPI over the years. But I think anecdotally, you know, in, in this next year's budget, Broome County certainly provides more direct funding, but we're, you know, between maybe 30 and 40 percent of, of the operating costs for the library on a non-capital uh, level. Thank you for that. Sir, this is uh, Councilman Scanlon. Um, I have no problem with the, the library either, but is there, a, is there an end to this contract? Is there a, a date, a year end on this contract or no? Or this agreement, I should say. I do not believe so. I think it's, um, you know, the, there may be a mechanism for, for one of the municipalities to get out of it, but um, it is in perpetuity. And all the municipalities in Broome County contribute to this? Uh, the city is the only municipality um, that contributes in this in this manner. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I believe that was all my pages. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to move pages 15, 16, 45, 67, 83, and 84. Uh, may I, may I ask one question before we we move the pages? Is that okay? Sure. Yep, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just want to flip back to page 16, if that's okay. Um, and I was wondering, Jared, if you could please provide more information on what after-school programming the city funds. Um, let me uh, let me see if I can bring that up here. I know in the past that we've used some of this money for um, specific programs at the Boys and Girls Club uh, for Copernic to do uh, after school uh, programs uh, highlighting STEM. Um, but I can give you an idea this year if you give me a quick second. Just uh, going through the process of uh, of drawing up the line. Um, okay. You're still with me? Yep. Okay. Yes. Thank you for, for looking that up. I appreciate it. No problem. Our um our expenses the last couple of years in the youth program excuse me, youth programming line have been used to uh, fund the CARES uh program, which is the backpack giveaway program. That was in uh, 19 and uh, 20. And this year, um, do you expect to fund other programs or just an increase in the backpack giveaway program? Uh, probably an increase in the backpack program. I know that there's always the demand, but there's always a times where something else comes up where we get a request from the school district or one of the youth programming uh, entities that's kind of may not fit any one program and they need some gap funding. And we're not talking about uh, large amounts, but CARES would be our, our number one priority. Okay, thanks. Jerry, can I quickly ask a question regarding that? Um, so I'm sorry, just to understand. So when we're talking about the youth programming. Then what you're saying is that it's just a CARES program, um, the city funded, and not any of the other uh, specific cro uh, programs that you mentioned earlier um, at Boys and Girls Club or Copernic and that kind of thing. That did not happen this past year. 
and we're not planning on funding these programs this, this year coming up? No, I, I was, uh, before I had a chance to look at the um, the actual budget lines, uh, I was thinking that there were other youth programs. They were likely paid out of a, a, another source. But yeah, the last two years, it's been the CARES a Backpack Giveaway Program. Um, when we were able to, we had a large event where you had uh, other agencies that were doing some outreach work. I think there was some voter registration, et cetera. Uh, but that was what the funds were spent at this year and last year. Okay, thank you. Of course, many of the other programs are funded through the uh, city CDBG budget. Sure, thanks. Okay, thanks, Jared. I got our uh, Councilman Scringi already a motion to approve 15, 16, 45, 67, 83, and 84. Do I have a second for that? Second. Okay, all in favor of moving those pages? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, um, Lori and uh, Ken, we have uh, Councilman Scringi on the motion and Councilwoman Resiniti on the second. Um, just for two seconds, everyone, before we adjourn, um, tomorrow night, we only have two presenters, so that's good. We have a lot of ground to cover. Um, I'm not sure about Chief Sikuski's availability, but I did just communicate with, with Chuck. And as we all know, Chuck has an unbelievable handle on this, as, as he always does. So I would encourage you, he is available tomorrow. So if there's anything that's just little, kind of little things, and we've had a lot of good questions tonight, if there's anything little that Chuck could answer for you during the day, please get a hold of him, and that might save us a few minutes. So um, we want to be very thorough tomorrow night, and we've covered a lot of ground. I appreciate everybody's participation. Um, but so it's not a complete marathon for us all tomorrow, including Chuck. He does have some time during the day, so I would just encourage you to, and I don't want to speak for Chief Sikuski whether he's available during the day or not, but you can certainly try. Um, but Chuck did say he is available just a couple minutes ago. So I would encourage everybody to, especially those line items that are benefits and comp and insurance and that type of thing, a lot of mechanical items in Chuck's sections that we might be able to, to answer during the day if we have any questions. So I will take a motion to adjourn for this evening. So moved. Second. Okay. We got Councilwoman Friedman on the motion and Councilwoman Riley on the second. We are adjourned. We will see everybody tomorrow night at 515. Good night. All right, have a good night. Good night.